is up everyone welcome back to my channel my name is Meg and today we are doing a bachelor talks with the winter games episodes one and two all right so there is a new series that we have on our hands by the way my dog is like very she wants attention in today's video so you're gonna see more of her in just a minute um so we have a new series on our hands with The Bachelor. They decided to, you know, make some more coin off of the Olympics. And there's the Winter Games. And I wasn't sure entirely if I wanted to even tune in and watch this. Because I thought it would be super... I mean, it's a Bachelor. So it's, there's going to be cheesiness, right? Right? Um, but I didn't... You know, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised is what I'm saying. It's cheesy, but it's like not cringe cheesy. At least, yeah, it's not cringe cheesy. So, and it's also a lot more entertaining than the current season of The Bachelor. And if you guys are interested in my thoughts on that, I have a whole series discussing Ari's series um, every episode. <laughs> Sorry, my dog's like totally distracting me right now. So I will have a playlist linked up above and then also down below if you guys want to check that out. Subscribe so you don't miss out on future Bachelor Talk episodes. But yeah, I'm going to basically explain the first two episodes, give my thoughts and opinions. I would love to, for this to be an active, interactive discussion, so be sure to leave comments down below. We'll let you guys think of the first two episodes of Winter Games. And yeah, let's go ahead and get into this Get Ready With Me. We just went on a walk, huh? You should be tired. Husky mom problems. You take them on a walk and they get crazier. <laughs> All right, guys, sorry about that. Like I just had to show you what I'm dealing with in the background here. on a walk so that I'm like oh they'll be like tired so I can film without them like being crazy apparently I live in an opposite world <laughs> all right you guys I'm gonna try to get through this without any more interruptions from Luna um but yeah I was pleasantly surprised at how entertaining it was I mean just to throw some shade, it could be because Ari season is a total snooze fest, so I think that it's like totally entertaining and I'm so into it. Um, it's actually interesting to watch. Um, for my makeup today, I'm just going to be keeping it simple. Um, I just wanted to do like a get ready with me while I put my makeup on because why not? So I'm going to keep it light and simple today. Um, and can I just say really fast, like on a makeup note, I know that most people that are watching this probably like don't care about makeup, but like in the beauty community, so many like bigger influencers have been questioning primer. So today I put my foundation on without primer and it makes a difference in like the worst way because like a primer is a tacky base for foundation to stick to your skin and not using it. My foundation was like sliding all over the place and it looked awful and my pores looked huge. So... Tomorrow, I will definitely be back to primer. Anyways, um, so I'm just going to give you guys a rundown in case if you were like me and you were like on the fence if you wanted to watch the show or the series. Basically, it's exactly what it sounds. It's The Bachelor meets like Winter Games like for the Olympics. Um, and it's, it's like really entertaining. My only gripe with it is that I wish that they like showed more of them doing like the actual competing and like less of the drama but it's the bachelor so like i get it all right so again i have notes on my phone so i just want to go over the contestants and i think that it's cool that like like the olympics like it's not just like american bachelor and bachelorette they're from like all over the world and i had no idea the bachelor was like so huge outside the u.s that other countries like had like so many other countries have their own version of the show which is awesome so on team america we have ben we have viviana we have dean claire josiah leslie ashley luke eric jamie michael and lauren 
And then from other countries, from Japan we have Yuki. From Canada, which is interesting because like she doesn't speak English. So like as soon as I saw that, I'm like, how like is she not gonna go home after the first episode? <laughs> like you're here to find love, but you don't speak English. Anyways, um, from Canada we had Kevin and then Benoit. And then from China, we had Zoe, United Kingdom, there was Laura, Australia, there was Tiffany and Courtney, and Courtney is a guy. From Sweden, there's Rebecca and Stasi, New Zealand, Lily, Allie, and Jordan, which, by the way, was it Australia? I think it was Australia where they said that Tiffany, like, um, is bi and was open up to, was open to a relationship with a woman and she fell in love with a woman. And I thought it was, like, really shitty. I could have been, like, one of the people from New Zealand. I can't keep it straight. Um, but it was, like, really shitty of Chris Harrison. He, like, shut that down and, like, didn't really want to talk about it because I feel like in America, like, we've been wanting to, like, maybe see some of that on The Bachelor or Bachelorette or at least I think that it would be cool to be, like, all-inclusive. I, but I mean, it took them this long to like have like a, like a black bachelorette, so I don't know why I'm really surprised. Um, but I think it would be awesome to show like more inclusiveness on the show. Anyways, I just thought it was interesting like how quick he like kind of shut that down and stopped talking about it. Um, and then Germany and Switzerland had one person named Christian representing them. Finland, there was Jenny. And then we had another person show up late from New Zealand, and that's Jordan. We'll get to that in a minute. I also thought it was funny, like, how, like, they're totally playing up the Olympics and how they have, like, a sports broadcaster for, like, these complete amateurs that don't even know how to do half the sport. So, like, that, I think it's funny that they have her commentary. Her commentary, like, really brings the show because Chris Harrison, like, really isn't giving it. And she's, like, really smart and witty, and she actually new information about these contestants and like knew the dirt on them and then again Chris Harrison just kind of tried to shut everything down by the way can I just say it's so weird that they had a bachelor anthem like I'm like that was just a little bit too much for me and then of course they had like the OG bachelor couple come out and like light the torch so I mean, it's typical Bachelor cheesiness and typical Bachelor fashion in that sense. Um, so we see that Josiah and Allie are the first couple, couple I guess you could call them, to kiss. And it was just like really sweet. So they wasted no time like getting a move on it. Which I mean, like that's kind of the name of the game for these series is just like try to make as many connections as you can like as quick as you can just to see like if you need to play the field more or not um so i mean good for them and then that all happened before the first event which was skiing if you could even call it skiing <laughs> oh my god it was more like uh, everybody falling on their butts so my gripe with this is that they didn't show enough airtime of them skiing and like actually doing the competition. Like they showed the first round and then they kind of like just showed the highlights for like the other three first rounds and then they showed like the final. But I thought that they like really rushed it because honestly like that's the entertainment aspect of this series and show. So Rebecca got the first date card and she chose to take Luke with her on the date. And then Kevin got the date card and he chose Bibiana, which he, who he was kind of vibing with before. And then of course this upset Ashley and like she was crying about it in typical Ashley fashion. Sometimes like I really question her. Like I don't, there's just something about her that I just don't quite understand. Um, so that is what happened, and then there was a twist for the first, like, elimination. It wasn't anyone handing out roses. They had to vote people off, which, like, really threw everyone through a loop. And it just, like, really surprised me, like, the people that they picked to vote off. Like, I for sure, like, no offense to Yuki, but, like, I for sure thought she was going to be, like, she doesn't speak English. Like, I get, like, that's a hurdle, but at the same time, like... How is that conducive to her, like, finding love in, like, America where, I don't know, maybe I just have a negative attitude towards it, but I just didn't really see her staying. So the people that left at the end of the first episode was Eric, which his feelings were genuinely hurt, 
because it sucks because the whole premise behind it was like who do you think is a snake like who's not here for the right reasons and he seems like a really genuine person to me and obviously his feelings were hurt because he was tearing up as he was leaving. Other people that got eliminated were Laura, Zoe, Jamie, and Lauren. Now I'm going to go ahead and jump into episode two. All right, you guys, so just to keep it real on my eyes, I'm just going to use my highlights, bronzer, and blush. Um, oh, and then let me just also say, like, in the first episode, we kind of see, like, let's talk about Claire for a minute. So she has been known to get her heart broken repeatedly. I mean, the whole Juan Pablo thing, like, which, by the way, like, he was literally the worst. Um, <laughs> so she's on here, and she finds herself attracted to Benoit, who seems like an awesome dude. Like, okay, cool, like, you're from Canada. Like, it shouldn't be that hard to make it work. That's another thing with, like, this whole premise of about the show it's like these people live like halfway across the world. Like how do you expect people to get engaged and like make it work? Like going on the show, you have to at least be willing to like relocate to a different country or if you're visiting from a different country to relocate to America. So like that's just kind of like my like it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out kind of thing. Um, and then I was also interested to see if like people from the same countries were going to stick to each other, but it seems like everyone's mixing it up. So like, that's really cool to see. So yeah, Claire finds herself, um, infatuated with Benoit and then Christian starts to slowly creep in and she finds both of them attractive. Nothing wrong with that. The whole purpose of the show is to like sit there and basically find like your person and of course you're going to need to talk to different people and like kind of date around if you will to see who you're making a connection with and who you're not. Again, that's just like the name of the game. So um, moving into the second episode, we definitely see Claire, Benoit, and Christian as like a love triangle. And then we have Courtney and Lily who have paired up, which they seem like they're going to be like a really sweet couple and I hope like they can make it last and like make it through to the end. And then we have Allie and Josiah and again like Josiah seems like such a gentleman to Allie. Um, but there was like some confusion at the rose ceremony where like people were saying he wasn't being genuine with her, which I don't understand. I don't see it. But then again, we're not there all the time so we don't see what happens off camera. Um, and then Bibiana and Kevin definitely seem like they coupled up and then Dean and Leslie and I really want the best for Leslie um I think that she's a sweet girl and Dean just worries me like I hope he can pull it together and make it work with her but I mean obviously we're gonna get into it and she has her doubts on the relationship too um but that's just kind of where everybody's at going into this episode after the last rose ceremony that's just kind of where everyone stands so the event today was speed skating and I can't really complain about them not showing more of this because it's like, I mean, honestly, how much can you show? It's like people doing laps around an ice rink. Um, but they did a twist on this episode and they had the worst of the worst compete against each other for the date card. So I thought that was nice because I feel like people that aren't athletic were feeling discouraged. Like, how are we going to get ahead in this game? We're not ever going to get dates, da, 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 da. So I thought it was nice that they were awarded that opportunity. So uh, the winners of the worst of the worst was Dean and Stassi. So it seemed obvious like Dean would pick Leslie, but then um, he was just being weird in the interview. Like he said, I'm gonna have to talk to a couple more people and figure it out and we'll see if Leslie's who he picks. Like to me, that's just like red flags and it just reminds me of like the same Dean from Paradise because he says he's done all these changes and he's grown as a person and he's going to be decisive, blah, blah, blah. Well, you don't sound very decisive there, dear. Um, so I was just kind of like, Leslie is genuine. She knows what she wants. Like she's not here to like bullshit around with people. So if he's just like, I don't know. I was like, who is he here to play games with? Because there hasn't been anyone else he's shown any remote interest in. So I didn't really get his whole comment with that. But in the end, he does end up picking Leslie for the date night, which he should be doing. <laughs> so in the meantime, Jordan comes into the house once they're done with this little competition and kind of stir things up. So he kind of has a bad reputation because he is from... Um, New Zealand I believe and he flipped a coin at the end which is admittedly a really shitty thing to do 
Um, if you're not feeling it with someone, like, just tell them. But, I mean, we can't sit here and speak for other people because we don't know the pressures of the show or, like, what it's like to be on the show. But I would like to think that if you're not feeling it with either of the two final contestants, you just wouldn't pick anyone. But we'll see. Um, it seems like he has learned from his mistakes and he wants to move on. So he kind of, like, captured Stassi when... They got back to the house, which had Luke a little bit worried, um, but they had a talk, and she ended up picking Luke for the date card, which their date was so cute, and I love their connection. I think that they have such a genuine and sweet connection, so they got to go on like a little sleigh ride, and they got to go hang out in like a hot tub, so that was really, like I loved watching their date together. And then um, Dean and Leslie had a very serious conversation. She basically laid down the law, let him know that she's not here to like bullshit around and she's here to like find the real deal. And if he doesn't see that with her, he needs to let her know so she's not wasting any more of her time. And he agreed that he would definitely stop being so indecisive. I think Dean's, he's too much in his head. He's too paranoid about what happened last time, but at the same time, I also feel like he really hasn't grown up, and I feel like he still has a lot of maturing that he needs to do. So I'm interested to see, like, how he plays out the rest of the season. Um, and I I don't want to say I have a feeling that Leslie's going to get hurt because I really don't want her to, but I hope it works out for them and that I, you know, I just hope that she's happy. So it was kind of funny that their date card was like, let's act like kids again. And she's like, oh, this is perfect for you. It's like, I love that she's like not afraid to call him out on him acting childish. So basically they go tubing and then they have like another serious talk about their relationship and where they see the future of it going. So it seems like for now it's going to work out unless they have new people come into the house and she might be in trouble and I know that's shitty to say but I'm still on the fence with them. So now I thought, you know, the promos make it seem like there's going to be all this drama between Viviana and Ashley and Kevin and there really wasn't any. It seemed like um, Kevin and Bibby had like a mutual understanding that they were closing the chapter on themselves um, and Kevin wants to pursue Ashley now which obviously makes Ashley very happy because that's pretty much the only person in the house that she had her eyes on so I'm glad that it was a peaceful thing and it wasn't all this drama but I don't know, I guess we'll see down the line how that works out. Alright, so now we kind of have like this whole showdown with like Christian and Claire and uh, Benoit. And Claire and Christian very much have a very... Claire and Christian have really poor communication. <laughs> like, there's such a lack of communication between the whole hot tub debacle thing, like such a huge misunderstanding and I'm sure it is a cultural thing but it did seem like Christian was coming across a little bit disrespectful in the way that he was talking to Claire um but before that happened Benoit was kind of like well what's going on because he was basically he like it seems like the kind of guy that just wears his heart on his sleeve he poured his emotions out he dropped the L-bomb which I do think is a little bit early but I mean the show's intense and it's meant to speed things up um, but that's what he was feeling in the moment and Claire didn't want to pursue things with him so he chose to leave um, because he didn't see himself wanting to make a he couldn't see himself making a connection with anyone else on the show so despite him leaving which was causing conflict between Claire and Christian you think it would get better but it really didn't I just hope that uh, moving forward they have better communication or else it's just it's not going to work at all for them and then we have I'm sorry I'm like jumping all over the place and we have Bibiana and Jordan and like they really seem to be hitting it off so a lot of times with these couples that like go like super fast and give it their all it's interesting to see like if they have the momentum to last throughout the season or if someone else is going to come between them or if they're just going to fade out just as quickly as they came together so at this point for me like to wrap it up like Dean is still like really confusing like he's confused himself and like I just I hope he can get it together in the next like two episodes and like know what he wants. I think he's so afraid of hurting other people's feelings but he also needs to do what's best for him 
and I just, he's just still such a confused mess. Um, but at this rose ceremony, it was a guy's turn to hand out the roses, and there were two people that went home. So basically, Claire and Christian had like their whole huge splat like right before the rose ceremony. And Claire is confusing to me because in the interview, she was saying like, if he offers me a rose, I'm not going to accept it, and that means I'm probably going to go home. Like I would never accept a rose from him. Like. Saying all this anti-Christian stuff, but at the end of the day, he was the last rose to give out. And she said absolutely, and she seemed so thrilled by it. Like, she's, she confuses me. Um, and then speaking of Claire, and a spoiler alert, I guess the Bachelor Twitter account tweeted out a picture of an engagement ring and said things get icy this season or something, and everyone thinks that it's Claire because in the picture of the person who's engaged this season is wearing a pinky ring. And uh, Claire is the only person on the show so far to wear jewelry like that, and she does wear a ring on her pinky. So that really has me like wondering if her and Christian are gonna get it together or if there's gonna be a new love connection. I'm really hoping that there's a new love connection for them. I don't know what it is about this side of my lip, but I can't get it to cooperate or look even, so it is what it is. So at the Ro Rose ceremony, I thought for sure that Yuki was gonna be going home because like she seems like very sweet, nice, genuine person. Um, but Ben, who by the way, I feel like I kind of forgot about him because like everyone talks about him and like it's just like, oh my god, he's like the best bachelor ever, da 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 da. So you would think that he would like have all these girls trying to go after him. But you realize at the rose ceremony, he really hasn't made a connection with anyone, which is kind of worrisome for him for like next week going into the show. Like who is gonna give him a rose? Um, so he go ahead, so he goes ahead and is really nice and gives a road to Yuki because he said that, you know, she's been struggling the most and she has like the most difficult tea out of anyone here to make a connection. So he still wanted to keep her around to give her that chance and I thought that was really sweet of him. But I like that he's willing to give her a chance and not knock it just because she does have the lit, lit, the, the, the. I like that he's willing to give her a chance and just like not just, you know, kind of brush her under the rug because there is a language barrier. I'm sure there is an interpreter at the house and they're just not showing it. So the people that are going home, by the way, Tiffany was like in a tizzy, like worried about going home and I feel so bad for her. I hope she can find a connection. I think Michael's like another person. It's just like he hasn't really seemed to vibe with anyone. Maybe they'll have a connection in the next episode. But Rebecca from Sweden ends up going home and so does Jenny from Finland. So that is that. That's going to wrap it up for the first two episodes in this series. I think I'm going to be pumping out like four or five videos this week. So get ready, you guys. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on my future content. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think about this series. If you like it better than Paradise, if you like it better than The Bachelor, like if you think that this is something that they should do every year, let me know. I would love to hear from you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye guys.